Saturday. Welcome back to the Movie Couple channel. I'm Wendy. I'm Dustin. And we are, man, today feels like we've already done a lot today, even, yeah. even though um, at the same time we kind of didn't. Like, there's this whole thing where I'm kind of like, I did stuff, but then it's like I did one thing within that two hour frame, which is yeah. live stream on another platform that's not YouTube or Instagram. And I'm just feeling, I don't know, like a little drained. For some reason, you know, it doesn't take much these days. You know, we do like one or two things, and then by the, it feels like you've done like an entire day's worth of work. Yeah, my stamina has just I need the glasses to read. just crashed, you know, the last month or so. I think it's I almost crashed my face, and I was like, nope, stop it, don't do it. Smack. Yeah, don't, I can't, I can't. I'm, I've gotten really good at <laughs> I, of course, me telling me he's Wendy, terrible. I'm at terrible. It. I mean, like, you can watch almost any of our videos, and I'll be like, Bleh. I'm trying to like, like save you from. I'm like I'm so strict about how we coronavirus. <laughs> um, so yeah, you guys. Hey, welcome. So we're we've got a lot to talk about today. We're going to talk about Boba Fett being mm -hmm. in the Mandalorian. We're going to talk about Mark Hamill becoming a vampire. We're going to yep. talk about um, Andy Serkis um, talking about a little bit about Matt Reeves, um, the Batman. Sounds exciting. We're going to finally do Mad Libs because I didn't, <laughs> I specifically didn't pick as many topics. Um, oh. Duh. Okay, before we go any further, I'm seeing it in the chat. Dustin finally got a haircut. Oh, yeah. What do you guys think? Do you think? Let us know what you guys think before I talk a little bit more about that. Let us know what you think. Put it in the yeah, chat. Yeah, here, close look. Close look <laughs> at, like, everything that's there. Oh, my gosh. Okay, let me go back to... Oh, I should probably turn my phone. Oh, yeah. To... <laughs> Put it to silent. silent. Leave us alone. We're on a live stream. Yes, leave us alone. What do you guys think of the haircut? Because Dustin mm -hmm. did it himself. Yep, yep. I well, helped, I I helped had even out the bit. back. I had a little bit of assistance to get the back all nice and done. And because there's just some things that I was just like, eh, I can't get it. Yeah. So Wendy did very mm -hmm. happily help me. The hedgehog looks good. <laughs> it very much is kind of a hedgehog um, ha um, hairdo. But I have to admit, all I did was take um, those buzz How are clippers. are we the same height? I'm looking at uh, our camera. How are we the same height? I, sl I slouch. Oh. See, now you're taller. Don't do that. <laughs> Aesthetically, Shit, um, Aesthetically the, the Virgo side of me is like, stop it. Stop <laughs> that. I had it all aesthetically figured out. Um, we're, what else are we going to talk about? The Rock and Emily Blunt being in a new movie together when we haven't even seen them in the Jungle Cruise yet. Which I'm super excited for, but we have to wait until the Jungle Cruise comes out. Yes. The, I think I said the Jungle Book by accident. Oh, did you? <laughs> I, meant to I say still the heard Jungle, Jungle Cruise. Cruise. I still think that kind of works oh, out. Oh, no. Oh, my gosh. Uh, we have a comment in the chat. Did you hear WWE Superstar? Becky Lynch is going to be in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Oh wait, oh, hold cool. on. What? No, I, that's the thing is that news kind of just comes out whenever now. Most of the, I mean, during the normal cir circle of life kind of thing that goes on with movie news, they all comes out on certain days. Oh yeah. But now it's just like oh, whatever we want to okay. drop it. Uh, I'm seeing a, an article from Cinema Blend, Becky Lynch. Six Marvel characters, the WWE star would be perfect to play. So is it a confirmation that she's playing or is it just a, who she'd be good at? Because that's very different. Um, in a recent tweet, is to be believed that day may be coming sooner rather than later. Ooh. Okay, she is rumored to be in an upcoming Marvel movie, but what movie? Okay, now we get to the speculation part. Got it. Okay. Dun, dun, so we don't dun. know the capacity of what character she could be playing. Rumor has it she's going to be in Black Widow. But wait. Okay. How could she be in Black? That's already been filmed. And right, but maybe now the rumor is finally like being released that she's going to appear in it. It wouldn't make oh. sense somebody with her like physicality and skill to be one of the. Um, I almost said like one of the spires. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, right. because you know, like Florence Pugh and and. Uh, uh, Scarlett Johansson, they like, you know, as Black, before she became Black Widow, she was training under that program. So yeah, to be one she's of She's not the... the only one. They all have similarities. They all know how to fight the same. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be interesting. Um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm for it. More new people that they can introduce us to uh, the Marvel Cinematic Universe, the better, because there's so many comic, comic characters, part of the Red Room. Thank you, Debbie. Um, 
Uh, okay, and yeah, doesn't really give me too much more about it, but yes. A nice little teaser for when we were able to finally yeah. go out and see the movie. Yeah, that's going to be exciting. Let's see. Um, what else are we talking about today? We are talking about... <laughs> Look at my little... My little, my little note. Um, we actually just, uh, we're all caught up with what we do in the shadow. Yep. And we actually did a very impromptu live stream the other day, yesterday, because... We decided that we didn't want to edit. <laughs> yeah, we didn't want to edit. So I said to Dustin, let's have a super clean, super like just like, you know, we'll, we'll stick to talking the main points. We won't go to the chat too, too much. We did a little bit because um, late to the party and, and a couple of other people were in there and they gave us a lot of good. Um, they had a lot of good inputs um, on the review and the show. So we set them out loud. But it was a very like straight up just live stream. Talk about the show and episodes three, four, and five, and mm -hmm. then we were out. So it wasn't anything like this, but we weren't really interacting as much as we normally do. So, but that show is bananas, and we're going to talk about that in our show topics in just a little bit. Yep, yep. Um, we've also been watching, we actually just finished yesterday, the, not finished, but we watched an episode. We got all caught up. Mm -hmm, in Disney Gallery, The Mandalorian. This was all about legends, so they had... Kathleen Kennedy at the table, who is like, like, I know she's gotten a lot of backlash or saying she ruined Star Wars, da 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 da. And I understand like the, the fans stand on that, but mm -hmm. I think we should also remind ourselves that she is not Star Wars. She, yes, she is the president of like a specific yeah. part of the company, but it's still a team decision. And sometimes it is her call to make a decision. Sometimes it is. You know, maybe maybe she says, "Well, you guys all agree on." The, I mean, I don't know. We, we're not sitting in these rooms. Yeah. So maybe she, you know, is saying like, "Okay, well, I want this one way, but obviously everybody else thinks this way, so we're gonna go with that." So we don't really know, and I don't I don't like to see like a single person being blamed for. Yeah, um, because you know what Stephen King said it the best. He says so he was in an interview, and they asked him, "Would you rather write a book or a screenplay?" And he was like, "Well, it's different because a book, it's one hundred percent on me." You know, I'm going to write the book. I'll have the editors go through it, may go through it, mm -hmm. and then that's going to get published. Mm -hmm. If I write a screenplay, I write the screenplay, then the screenplay goes to a producer that has his thoughts, and the producer is going to give it to a director, and then the director is going to give it to an actor, and then also have photography and lighting. There's so many There's different a lot of hands in, in the pot. There. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, you know, true, you could kind of put a little bit of blame on Kathleen Kennedy, but sure. for the most part, it is a huge collaborative effort. Yeah. So I guess sometimes I feel bad for some of the hate. I was just like, oh, that's so much. We have a super chat from Chris Mendes. Woo! Chris Mendes gave us a lot of really great tips on like Disney park tours. Oh my gosh. And he actually yeah. he actually messaged us and he sent us some um, photos of like various tours and like Which we are oh, going to do. So we are cool. so Bye going to do that, yeah. dude. So thank for today, so thank you so much, Chris. And for today's super chat, he writes, for the both of you, would you be Jedi or Sith? And what would your favorite force power be? I kind of already, I will, I, go first. well, because um, I would be very much, I think, be a Jedi. I'm very much a Jedi in life. That's how I think I kind of, I kind of live like my life, but I want um, Jedi Master Plo Koon's power was his force justice. Yeah. Which is Force Lightning, but the Jedi version of it. Yeah. So he always had that little secret card that he could play yeah. that n not very many Jedi or Sith knew that he had. Yeah. So I would probably go down that route of being a Jedi that could use Force Justice. I'm very conflicted in this question, honestly, because my heart says... I'm a Jedi. I believe in bringing balance to the Force and fighting, you know, for like, for like the light side of things. But then my head goes, Wendy, you are so much more like a Sith. You are so much more like a Sith. Like I, I just get really cynical at times, and and uh, sometimes I like verbal diarrhea, and I just like say not so nice things about about things, and mm -hmm. like. You know, or, or like, I just like, sometimes I just, I don't give two Fs and I'm just like, well, blah. But um, you are a very kind at heart person. I even guess. though, even though true, you might get cynical. I, I do think get really still, cynical. I, because what is it? When you took your Harry Potter test 
you got what, like seventy-five percent of Ravenclaw, but then the rest 25% was twenty-five percent Slytherin. Slytherin, yeah. Like I, I wouldn't be surprised if I retook the Pottermore quiz right now; it'd be flipped. But I've also like taking various like Buzzfeed quizzes on Harry Potter because God love Buzzfeed. Like I, I go yeah. down a rabbit hole. Hashtag rabbit hole of like <laughs> just just quiz after quiz. What Disney princess are you? What what is Hashtag the Disney song Buzzfeed that best quiz. describes you? Yeah. And um, and you guys, go ahead and let us know in the chat, too, if you were to pick, do you think you're more of a Jedi or a Sith, and what force power would yours be? Um, that's a great question, Chris. Thank you so Ahsoka much. Ahsoka Tano! Oh. You would if probably I had be Ahsoka, Ahsoka as You option, would probably be a Jedi that left, that left the, order the Jedi, because the Jedi Order. Because she's like, all I'm, you. I'm done with all this <laughs> Yes, I'm done with you guys. I'm out of here. I'm gonna go my own way. Yeah, I yeah that that's that. I think that would be very much me. Force power. I think one of my favorite things with the force is that you can pull things towards yourself. <laughs> uh, and that's the lazy Remote part control. of me speaking. Yeah, food. Uh, water. You know, just just all that. I mean, mm -hmm. the force is a magic, so you can't like mis magically like make something like that's more of a spell casting in Harry Potter or something like that. But yes. Um, that's what I would want. It's it's very basic. I'm I'm a base. I'm a basic basic girl. Um, let's see. Honestly, though, yeah. I think that would be a big problem with a lot of Jedi. Is that some of them would get really lazy and they just be like, oh, I could get up and get something to eat, and I was like, forceful. Ah, sandwich. <laughs> oh my gosh! Thank you so much, Chris. That's a wonderful question. Awesome question. Let's see what other comments are saying. Um, BuzzFeed quizzes. I did get Avengers Endgame character. Are you? I got Captain America. It was on BuzzFeed, and when Ahsoka left, it was dev devastating. Yes, it was. Um, what was I saying? Some of the BuzzFeed quizzes that I took for Harry Potter, they put me in Gryffindor. You're not. I was like, enough. that's so. Like, what? <laughs> what so happened? What happened to the algorithm? That however, I every time I've taken any kind of a test, can you guys guess? Oh yeah, Justin's, let's see what some guesses are. I want to see what which guesses, and then we'll hop into I the topics. Am. Because I, even before I took any of these tests, I knew what house I was going to be. Yeah, and I knew where I should be placed. And anytime it said something different, I'm like, no, you're wrong. Yeah. You're wrong. And but, while you guys are writing in uh, what, um, what, oh God. What household? Thank you. What house? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh God. See what happens. And maybe I shouldn't have bring lost for, you bring for. today. Uh, but let us know what you, what house do you think Dustin, what, what house you would file him under as we get to the next super chat by Sergio Wagner. Hello. Hey, um, hey you, hey, you two never fight. Who's oh. in the darkest side of the force uh yes we do fight we're we just don't we live we live together and we're married so yeah. we i don't want to say it's a full out fight i would say there's spats and we have bigger most of the time it's eight. things like you know really small things well, well what we'll do is we'll probably we'll bring up the conversation and we're kind of like we know it's going to lead into a discussion or i guess you uh, let's say intense negotiation uh -huh. But we try to go the route of talking it out. Um, I we try not to go the route of yelling at each other. I don't think we've ever yelled and screamed at each other. Well, I feel like maybe once or twice we have because we have been together. We've been married for six years. We've been together for eleven total. So mm -hmm. out of all those years, there I'm sure there was one or two. So before I met Dustin, I and I still have that part of me in me. I just don't let him see it. It's um, I have a very fiery personality. I tend to, yeah, I tend to want to, I can get confrontational. Let's just say that. I am not afraid to get in somebody's face and let them know what I think. Um, maybe it's the Asian in me. Maybe it's the Miami coming out. I want to say mostly that's it's the Miami influence. Like, yeah. like I don't, I don't care. And I will, you know, and especially like the younger part, the younger Wendy would have just gotten, I would have exploded. Like I can go from zero to 60 real quick and get into your faces. Um, I don't like I, I don't like to do that to Dustin. I have done so in my past relationships where fights <laughs> get very explosive. Where I mean I'm not like hitting people, but there is yelling, crying, and screaming, and it's ugly and um it's something I'm not proud of. So it's something that I try to keep 
under control, especially when it comes to my marriage, because he's like yeah. the most important person in my universe. Mm. So I <laughs> covered your <laughs> I wanted you to touch my your... face. <laughs> Coronavirus. I washed my hands like 40 times already today. Look, I'm getting rat. Oh, you can't see. I'm getting rashes because like my hands are so, so, so dry. It's ridiculous. Um, let's see what you guys are saying. So thank you so much, Sergio, for, for that super chat. So <laughs> the answer is yes, we, we, we do have bickering moments and we do have spats, but we usually talk it out. And look, we exist in the same space. So if you can't resolve it, then that's a, then that's a, then you have a bigger problem. Yeah. And you know, the one who loses the fight is the one who ends up leaving the house without their keys. Okay. Oh, cause then you're just locked out oh. and you're in an argument. So, <laughs> wow. Okay. I'm out of here. You close the door. Wait, I need to get my. Uh, hon, can you unlock oh the door? Oh my gosh! Yeah, I would not. I, I wouldn't want that to happen. So uh, let's see. Okay, so let's go ahead and get oh, to. So yes, how, my, I'm sorry, real quick. Oh, my yes. household. Was, Debbie got it right. Yep, it was Hufflepuff. And who else got it right? Jack too. Debbie and Jack Hufflepuff. Hufflepuff. I am 100 percent Hufflepuff. True and true. Which is Hufflepuff. great because it kind of balances Winnie and I out. Because like she said, where she can be very confrontational, I'm usually the exact opposite. Yeah. I don't like confrontation. So I usually try to, what is that called? Um, downplay, not downplay, but try to dissolve, whatever that word is called, dissolve a situation. Mm -hmm. So to make it so it's not as intense. Mm -hmm. But I have a problem with holding things in. And then they kind of just, then I get moody. And then Wendy's like, uh-oh, what's wrong? What I do. Well, you what know I that do? one time a week ago. <laughs> no, and you're like, I don't, oh, I don't no. remember. <laughs> so that's um, the that's probably the biggest problem that we have as a couple. Yeah. But overall, yeah. I think we do pretty damn well. I think we do pretty well. I mean, there's always. I think one of the things, oh, guys, welcome to our relationship talk. We're <laughs> movie couple. We are now turning this instead of movie <laughs> talking about movies to talking about our feelings. This is our therapy session. We need therapy. <laughs> we can't afford it. So. I think therapy is great. I think. Every Everybody, if you can afford diffuse. it, diffuse. Diffuse the situation, Debbie. Can you just come, like, and just be, just be our, our dissolve. dissolve. Sorry, it's fine. It works. You touch your face. How's that? Oh my god, it didn't work. Uh, what was I saying? Oh, um, uh -huh. relationships. So. I think some people, I swear we're going to get into the show topics. I think some people, when they get married, they think, that's it, I'm done. I put the put a ring on it. And uh, cool. And then you stop putting in an effort in the relationship, in your appearance, in building, continue to build your relationship, in your communication. Like, being married doesn't mean you stop dating the person. You're still dating and you want to continue to impress them. Like, still why? got to impress them, you know? Like, you know, this is why, like, date nights for couples, even if you're married, it's still important. It's important to make the other person feel important and included. And so, um, and that's one of the things that we learned that, like, getting married doesn't mean you stop being lazy and you just kind of live whatever life you want. You have to, it's a, it's a, it's a job. Yeah. It's a job. It's a lifelong job. And, and it's also, if you love the person, you will put in the effort to do that. Yeah, true. And you know what? If you're not in a relationship and you're like, hey, you know what? I'm happy being by myself. Yeah. Cool for and you. Just, and just it's like whatever works for you. Just like what you guys are saying in the chat, like being single is great and you can do what you want with, with no objection. That's well, absolutely. I, I do what I want. Yeah. It's, it's absolutely correct. And like, if you like it, then you like it and you are living, then you're living your, your best life. And mm -hmm. I hate this whole like, oh, I'm guys, not like. I'm not like with somebody that means I'm, you know, like unattractive or whatever. It's kind of like, no, the right person will come when they come. Exactly. Um, at least that's what I think. Cause it took many failed relationships and many years before I met Dustin. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you some of those relationships, I cried so much more in like my past relationships and had way more fights than I have ever had with Dustin in the 11 years that we've been together. And that should, you know, say something. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, it just really depends. Okay, we are, and welcome to my TED Talk. <laughs> Let's get into our show topics, one of them, which is Dwayne Johnson and Emily Blunt is teaming up for another movie. It's called Ball and Chain. And if you guys <gasps> ever saw their, uh, what is that called? Their D23 presentation when they when came out should. for the Jungle Cruise, not the Jungle Book. 
Um, the two of them have great chemistry. Yes, they, they can do. certainly serve some words back and forth. And that is exactly what I want because that's exactly what this movie would be. So this is um, the movie Bond Chain is very early in development. I'm reading the um, article from Deadline. So this is super, super early. Um, but they are both attached to play a how funny we're talking about this Husband. a bickering couple <laughs> who receives superpower that will only work if they can learn to put aside their differences and work together <laughs> what oh my gosh this sounds like so, i haven't heard about this but what sounds really funny about that is the fact that if they do try to kind of work together but then they try to use their superpower and then it ends up doing something else yeah. Kind of thing. That sounds like it's going to be, that's going to be great because The Rock does an amazing job. And so is she so like funny. Mm -hmm. Emily Blunt is so talented. She can be funny. She can play dramatic as we can, we can all see in um, A Quiet Place. She can mm -hmm. sing. She is, oh God, like triple, quadruple threat. Um, so here is a description from the four part comic book. And this comic book was published in 1999. Oh. So it tells the story of Edgar and Mallory. Um, who have decided to throw in the towel. And, well, at least that was the plan until a mysterious meteor um, bathed the couple in, like, uh, extraterrestrial energy that gave them the superpower. And so, and then that goes into, like, their power will only work if they... Work together. To make their marriage work. And um, here's a hilarious. cherry on top. The script is by Emily V. Gordon. She is married to... Uh, 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 Kumail Anagiani, very, very funny people, excellent writer. They wrote The Big Sick together. Um, that story, I don't know if you've seen it, The Big Sick. Mm -hmm. It's great because it's actually a true story. She literally was in a coma. Oh. And that is like how they met and everything. It's it's incredible. The Big Sick is great because it'll make you laugh and it'll make you cry. I cannot wait for this to come out. Um, and it sounds like um, Netflix could possibly be the destination for this movie. Oh, that's awesome. Which is perfect. So there's not been any sort of a confirmation by their reps um, because it's so early, but this is what Deadline is reporting. And I hope it happens because I am all for it. This sounds seriously amazing and I am excited to know more about it. Yeah, that's actually, I mean, that's really cool sometimes to take a genre that people have heard of, you know, mm -hmm. like the mysterious superpowers that are bestowed upon someone, but then to add that nice little twist in there yeah. of, well, you have to work together and they're a bickering couple. So, and plus when you have The Rock, The Rock does an amazing job on trash talking. I mean, he had I an mean, entire it's, it's, career. It's, it's built in. That it's in is, his blood. That is his career. That is kind of his MO. I have a show and tell. You keep talking. Okay. And what's hilarious, I just love the fact that you're going to get someone like The Rock playing alongside Emily Blunt. And if you guys get a chance to go on a line and see their D23 um, reveal of the Jungle Book, they're going back and forth, and you can tell that it's not scripted, and it is seriously funny to watch. Speaking of The Rock, um, here is a super duper old photo of me <laughs> and when I met The Rock for the first time. And if what you, kind of name is The Rock? <laughs> yeah, that's literally what I said as I sat very next, very close in proximity of him um, at the Cheesecake Factory years ago, celebrating my birthday. And one of my family members like, take a picture with The Rock. Don't you know who The Rock is? He's wrestling superstar. And I was, at the time, so young, didn't know about wrestling, didn't care for wrestling. And I was like, mm, I don't know. Um, and then so I took a picture with him. So I have indeed, oh, boy. Oh, oh boy. boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> it's there somewhere. You can kind of see it. Met The Rock. Woohoo! Dwayne The Rock. Look how, old, look how young he looks. Look at the fashion. Look at his hat. It says The Rock. <laughs> Don't look at me. Um, okay. So that was my show and tell. Um, let's see what the chat is saying about some of the stuff. Singles want to enjoy the movie. <laughs> I think they will. I think they'll enjoy uh It's still the funny to see, you know, two people kind of go at it. It's always yeah. funny. It's sad. It's kind of like watching a train wreck kind of thing. Yeah. But watching other people's kind of bickering and misery is sometimes very entertaining and that's something that <laughs> the rock does incredibly well I yeah think. so i'm super excited to see this of course any movie 
with The Rock. I'm like, yeah, let's go see that. Yeah. I just want to shout out to um, Dave Detua really quickly. Thank you so much for hanging out with us in our stream. It sounds like you had quite a hectic uh, Saturday, but we're glad you're here and we hope we can bring a little bit of light and entertainment into your day. And we have a super chat from Christopher Woo! Mendes. Thank you so much. Hey, thanks, I'm going to put this up right here. Chris says, in two years, my friends and I are going to oh, all three Disney parks in Asia. Can you talk about your trip to Tokyo? And was there a video of it? This is um, a great quick segue because um, we visited Tokyo in 2018. Mm -hmm. And we visited Disneyland and hey. Disney Sea. Now, when you go and visit the parks in Tokyo, um, know that you have to try to buy your ticket in advance. Um, it's really hard to buy it from the U.S. via the internet because they only take specific credit cards. So they either either take Discovery or the JC something. It's like an Asian like oh, card company yeah. or something like that. You won't be able to use your Visa and you won't be able to use your um, MasterCard on the internet. Once you get to Tokyo, the park is very credit card friendly. We use mm -hmm. our credit card in the park. That's all we use. So you're not going to have a problem with it. I would suggest that you do some research and um, take a look at what rights you absolutely have to go on. One of them should be Pooh's Honey Hunt. Yes, that and is... Go ahead. Yeah, that is definitely get the fast pass for that because if you can go on it more than once, we recommend it. We got to go on it twice. And I know a lot of you are probably going, Pooh's Honey, Honey Hunt? Hunt? That really? was our same reaction. Late to the Party actually recommended that right to us. Vanessa from Late to the Party, she was like, you absolutely have to go on Pooh's Honey Hunt. I was like, you know, okay, Pooh's Honey Hunt. Right, and I looked it up just to humor her and I was like, oh my God, we have to go on this. It's a trackless ride. It's a different ride experience every single time. I'm not going to spoil any more because you have to experience for yourself. Mm -hmm. um, if you want to look up video, like write few videos, you can. But if you're going to go anyways, don't do that. Just make that the very first fast pass we dash for. So um, I we would suggest one day at Disneyland, especially since, Chris, you are very familiar with the yeah. um, Anaheim Disneyland. I would say there's a lot of things you can skip. You just need, for someone like you, um, you just need one day at Disneyland, but I would book two days at Do Tokyo Disney Sea yeah. because it's much bigger. There's a lot to explore. Um, so try to buy your tickets ahead of time or get there um, before road drop so you can um, purchase your ticket. Um, and also know that uh, they don't speak English in the park. They have minimal English speaking available. They do have maps and stuff in English, but everything you're going to see in here will be in Japanese. So um, learn some basic Japanese phrases. It was really easy to understand. It's kind of the same thing when you step up to a ride, the cast member will ask you how many in your group and then and show and they'll look and they usually get it right. They'll say son or whatever. And they'll maybe they'll say two or three like in English. And then you tell them, you just hold up your finger, how many people in your group. So if you have five, you can say five and they'll say, in, Jap in, in English, number one, number two, which means which lane you go into. And because you're so familiar with Disneyland, I don't think you're going to have a problem, but we would suggest um, two days at Disney Sea and one day at Disneyland. Yes. If you can do more at both, I would highly recommend it because there's still a lot of stuff that I wanted to see, but yeah. we're like, we don't have much time. I want to try to get to these other things We first. never got the alien emojis, and I regret it oh every single day. Oh, my gosh. I know we missed those. And they have a whole bunch of different kinds of popcorn yeah. everywhere. And they have a little popcorn hoarder, which is amazing. Oh, really, yeah, it's right it. there. Talk about so, popcorn. But, I mean, they had uh, so many. They had chocolate-covered popcorn. They had... Um, like Milk chocolate, garlic, popcorn. they had barbecue, they yeah. had they had everything there. So I recommend making sure that you save room for popcorn. And try to buy one of these. They do sell out of popcorn cards. Popcorn is a big deal in yes. Disneyland and Seeds. It's a big deal. So this goes around your neck. And you put your little popcorn sleeve in here. This is smaller than the size that we get here in the U.S. Disneyland. But I'm going to try to make one that's modified to ours. Yeah, so we can um, fit like the... Uh, California popcorn. Yeah, but it's great because you can close it with a little Velcro, go on a ride, it straps your neck, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. And yeah. So, um, Chris, I wonder if 
if you guys want us to see, I got to get to all these super chats, but um, thank you so much for your question. And I would love to talk more about Disney parks with you. So you can just message us on the Disney, on the Disney, on the movie <laughs> couple Instagram. And we'll, we, we, I will, I will write you back. And we have another super chat from Sergio Wagner who writes, Hey couple, um, what do you think about the movies that could start this year, like Wonder Woman, Black Widow, and et cetera? Well, we've already talked a little bit about Black, our excitement for Black, Black Woman. <laughs> Black <laughs> Widow and Wonder movie. Woman. I'm sorry, I'm dyslexic. I flip words yeah. all the time. Um, I mean, there's a, there are so many movies that were supposed to come out already by now. Mm -hmm. So I've been just dying at the bit for us to be able to go back and watch, uh, go back to the theater and be able to watch them safely. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I'm super excited about Wonder Woman and Black Widow. Yeah, um, I gotta take the glasses off a little bit because it's giving me a bit of a headache. Um, I think starting the year off, I know they moved Mulan to June. So if Mulan stays, mm -hmm. that's the one theatrical release that we're going to, that's going to start finally start off 2020 for us. Um, followed by Wonder Woman and then mm -hmm. Black Widow. I think that's the order it's going to go in unless things continue to change, especially here in LA. We're not really sure because they're starting to reopen things here, but um, there are very strict restrictions so we will have to see about theater so Has hope, that suit. go <laughs> uh, we hope that answers your question sergio thank you so much for sending in the super chat we have another super chat from winston iro who writes oh thank you so much um how uh, would you compete in this showdown as a team or even as individuals or uh, even individually um, we might know a little bit about trivia and we've, we've seen a lot of movies. However, there have been times that there, my mind just goes blank. Oh, it's better without Even glasses. if it's not under pressure to where I'm like, oh, what is the name of that actor that was in that movie? I just can't remember them. And I know that when I get put on the spot, that's going to get even worse. I'm pretty sure... I would humiliate myself a little bit yeah. when it comes to trivia because some of these guys on the Schmodown are just like, holy cow, how did you know that? Their knowledge is immense and their recall. We, I think it's, re, look, Dan Merle said it. I think it was Dan Merle who said it. Either It's either you know it or you don't know it. Yeah. Um, and that's the thing. But even if you know it sometimes, like, you uh, can flub uh, uh, and you may uh. not remember. For example, late to the party, flubbed on a question that was about Rogue One and they said who was the act either the question was who was the actress that played uh Jin Erso in Rogue One or or what character did Felicia uh Fel did Felicity oh god I want to say Felicity ah, see see this is what's happening names blank on us and that's the thing I mean I love Felicity Jones honestly Felicity Jones. I know that I love movies I know which movies I've known and I truly don't like to like um prove that how much i know or how little i know yeah so i i mean it sounds like fun but honestly um i'm pretty good yeah um so sorry i just wanted to get my thought out so while, while i can still connect them um so either the question was who who was the actress that played jen urso or uh who did felice Felicity Jones portray in Rogue One. It was something like that, and they knew it because if you ask them today, just off the cuff, they would know it. Mm -hmm. But in the sense of like sitting on the stage, and it, you guys, most people haven't had the chance, like the luxury of like visiting Collider for a, for a live showdown taping. But even just in a studio setting, we do have a live audience most mm -hmm. of the time. There are about six to eight cameras and four giant like lights on you camera crew so you have to and it's hot it's hot um so you start you, to sweat you're under so much pressure 15 seconds sounds long it's not because you blink and it's over and you're just like oh my gosh um so like i felt bad that they couldn't recall because they both blinked and i was like that literally happens to me all the time so i have actually competed in one and i like to call it one and a half schmodowns i did one for um, I think it was 2019 or 2018. I think it was 2018. Um, the free for all. And I was the last person to go. This is when Brienne won the whole thing. Um, and I was so happy for her. <laughs> and I literally didn't get a single question right. Did I know the answer? Yes. Could I recall them? Absolutely not. No. So um, I'm a really bad test taker too. Yeah, same here. 
So always been really bad at tests. So the schmo down is probably not in our future. I know Christian has asked like before, like, hey, like, do you want to compete? That's why he's like, hey, do you want to do the the free for all? But um, I would do so badly that I think I just remain being a fan of the show, being a fan of all the contestants. Mm -hmm. And that's where I'm going to stay because I feel better knowing the answers and be like, oh, 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 it's this one, it's this one. And then like not be put on stage because I'm terrible. And plus like writing it down, it's a, it's a, it's and a whole spelling thing. spelling too. My yeah. spelling is horrendous. Well, neither can JTE. I mean, the, the man, the man, <laughs> the man can't spell. So much love to JTE, but he can't spell. So thank you for your question, Weston. Uh, Weston we hope you uh, enjoyed our answer and hope that answered your question. Let's talk about, Let's talk about Mark Hamill, <laughs> and let's talk about, talk about how he's gonna get some get a little vampy, little vampy on yep, us because yep. he's going to be appearing on um, what we do in the shadow. Then I believe like the very next episode. So I'm gonna pull mm -hmm. up this article from Sci-Fi Wire, and yes, so Hamill is set to come on next week uh, when yes. it's the sixth episode. It's titled "On the Run," and he actually tweeted out a little teaser. Um, on his Twitter, which you and I both watched mm -hmm, before this, mm -hmm. really where he's cool. in like the front yard of the house, he having a conversation with Nandor and Laszlo, and they're like, "Who are who are you?" And he's like, you know, and it's funny, he goes from like Jedi robe and cloak to vampire robe and cloak because he's like, and it's like white hair, and he's mm. got like the teeth. You can hear him talking with it. Um, amazing. And I love Mark Hamill. You know, he's so much fun to watch and he's so animated. And he also has just that really cool kind of raspy, deep the voice. The Joker. The Joker voice. And I do a terrible impression of it. Yes. But I'm super excited to see him. Um, I really, um, I kind of heard that he was going to be in an episode. And then when we saw the clip, I was like, this is going to be great. Yeah, it's going to be so good. So we're excited. We're a, f a big fan of what we do in the shadows. And I saw someone in the chat earlier was asking, where can they s watch what we do in the shadows? It is on FX. And then if you have Hulu, it does come on Hulu as well. So mm -hmm. if you don't have F FX where you live, I would suggest getting Hulu and then you can watch it from there. And we have another super chat from Sergio Wagner. Thank you so much, Sergio. His question is, hey, couple. When does Mandalorian season two release? So season two, um, I don't know. If they've given a strict release. I date. believe it's October of this year. Okay. I believe it's October this year. You guys feel free to correct us in the chat if that is wrong. But I believe principal photography have um, has wrapped. wrapped has... And if they don't need any sort of pickup shots, which nobody's doing right now because no, nothing is really. You can't do you can't do pickup shots. Yeah. So assuming that they're happy with the principal photography and they don't really need to do pickups, and then everything else can be done um, remotely as far as like sound editing, color, special effects, and everything else, then we are hopeful that we will get to see season two in October 2020. Which I'm um, super mm -hmm. excited about because. I mean, there's just going to be so many different things in this that I'm super excited about. One of which, of course, is Ahsoka. So I, I'm just so excited for this season. And the fact that we're getting it relatively quickly. Yeah. I'm you know, actually... from season one to season two. Mm -hmm. And, oh, you're going to look up the exact yeah, release am. date. Mm -hmm. and, and sometimes they don't get, they, they usually give like, okay, in October, but they don't say beginning of October, end of October. So okay. unless you actually have an actual date there. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, all right. Let's see what. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's that, that's a later. That's a later topic. One I was about of the to last say. topics for today. Yes. Okay. So according to the Hollywood Reporter, the Mandalorian season two is slated to to bow. I don't know why they. That's an interesting to uh, bow to bow. Okay. Well, I know that, but that's an interesting. I phrasing. know. Oh. Okay. <laughs> uh, in October on Disney Plus. So if um. If that's the case, then we'll see it at least in the U.S. We'll see it mm -hmm. on, in October. I'm not sure if the U.K. schedule was different because I know you guys got it later than we did, which I think it's – oh, because they got Disney Plus there later than we did. Oh. But hopefully now that everybody has it in the U.K. and the, in the U.S., they can just release – All at once. Simultaneously, yeah. So that this is probably is the better the way to go now. Oh, okay. Debbie has an interesting fun fact. The Czech Republic is opening up production again, so Falcon and the Winter Soldier might pick up again. Ooh. Um, here's the thing. What are the protocols for Marvel and for the production? How many people can be on set at once? That's like a continuous conversation that we've kept having. 
Um, we're not really sure, but that's really good news that if production's slowly opening up everywhere else, and I think Georgia has opened up. Um, so we'll see when production actually decides to open their doors and start filming again. Mm -hmm. Let's see. All right. This next topic I'm pretty excited about because I am so excited for Matt Reeves, the Batman. This is mm -hmm. going to be starring Robert Pattinson, Colin Farrell is in it, Andy Serkis is in it, to play Alfred. And in this article, actually on Collider, Andy Serkis teases the story tone um, and also Alfred in this uh, article. Oh. So um, he shares some insights and he kind of uh, very much confirmed what Colin Farrell had said, basically, that, uh, let me scroll back up to the top here, that, here we go, um, whoops. The story is going to be darker than the previous version of the story. And then he went on and said, oh, wow. um, I would say that's not far from the truth. So it basically confirms Colin Farrell's comments about that. And when he was asked if the movie would be uh, even darker and broodier. Um, so I guess he's kind of comp competing for the Nolan. Because that the, the Nolan ones we love. And it's pretty dark. Yeah. Yeah, so, um, you know, I don't mind it. It's the Batman. Yeah, and you know, when all. it comes to making, you can't really make Batman too dark, and you can't make Batman too brooding, because those are kind of like his two main characteristics of Batman. He's so, Batman brooding. Brooding and, you know, and dark. I will say... My name's the Dark Knight. <laughs> of course it's going to be dark. <laughs> I will say Robert Pattinson, as Edward Cullen... Was pretty broody. He broods. Was pretty broody. And that was a young Robert Haddingson. So imagine him now mm -hmm. um, with all the acting chops and experiences underneath. And I'm also so. super excited, sorry, for Andy Circus as Alfred. Yeah. He's a really good actor just all around. And he talks a little bit more about that too, a little bit more of an insight to um, the relationship between um, Alfred and Bruce. Mm -hmm. So he says that, uh, quote, this, it's very much about the emotional connection between Alfred and Bruce. That's really okay. the center of it. Uh, uh, and it's really, it's a really exquisite, exquisite script that Matt has written, which is really, really exciting to hear mm -hmm. because we know this the Batman's been through like a rotating door of like directors, stories, actors, blah, 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 blah. So, I mean, no yeah. actor was confirmed until re re really recently and I'm like 100% behind this choice. And um, Matt Reef said this to Nerdist back uh, early April. He said, quote, I wanted to do not an original tale, but a tale that was still acknowledge his origins in that uh, formed who he is like this guy he's majorly struggling and this is how he's trying to stay above that struggle wow. yeah. and you know one thing that I've always wanted to see and I don't think it's going to be in this Batman but I can't I hope that it's going to be in the next one that they do I want to see the character Clayface and there's a way that you could do it to where since he's a shapeshifter you really could make this an intense like murder yeah. mystery and you're trying to track down this guy who doesn't look the same ever yes. and i would just i'm really hoping that sooner or later they bring him in because now we have the technology to do the cgi on that absolutely um and also hello late to the party welcome hey to our stream they were so helpful in our um <laughs> uh uh what we do in the shadows uh, yeah. live stream because they they gave us a lot of fun tidbits and insight. And they also have reviews up. So if you guys want to check out their channel, it's just late to the party on YouTube. Check it out. They um, get to the reviewers much faster than we do. <laughs> so in that case, some people always joke, like, you guys should change your name to late to the party. And I was like, well, if it wasn't taken, but, you know. Yeah. Whenever we are late to the party to any sort of reviews or reactions, we always think of them. Yeah. Our little trip. We love you guys. Um, they actually... Just commented in the chat, absolutely, Clayface would be so badass. Hunting him down would feel very noir. Yeah, that's what, that's what I wanted. Is. I wanted that kind of film noir kind of vibe to it. And you could do that with yeah. Um, Clayface. Yeah. Buncha says Michael Jordan today is a real Clayface. I think Michael B. Jordan. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh, my God, yes. Cast him everything. I love him. He's an I amazing actor. I love him. All right, we're going to get into this super fun topic, and then we're going to get into Mad Lib, because I know the last few times Mad we've been Lips. skipping it, so we're finally going to do it today. Um, Tamora Morrison to play Boba Fett in The Mandalorian. What? What? So, Starlight Pit 
Uh, so, so he obviously didn't die in the Sarlacc pit. Um, I have to admit, though, I am a little torn about this. Are you really? I am. First, uh, my first instinct was, oh, that's really cool. But then again, I'm kind of like, well, now we have a real Mandalorian <laughs> kind of a thing. Someone who's actually trained Throwing shade at by Boba Mandalorians. Fett. And don't get me wrong. Mandalorian, I mean, um, Boba Fett is the original. The OG. The Mando. OG that everyone was introduced to. He got everyone just super excited about the idea of who are these Mandalorians? Where do they come from? What is their background? Mm -hmm. But honestly, now that we know, I kind of want to see more of like the ones who are really uh, Mandalorians instead of a bounty hunter that stole a Mandalorian armor who kind of gets credit for the Mandalorian heritage that he does not follow. Oh, uh, I see. Well, that can make it interesting. But here is some of the tidbits we found out. And this is according to the Hollywood Reporter who got an exclusive on it. So the actor, uh, Tamora Morrison, had played uh, Boba Fett's father, mm -hmm. not Boba Fett, in 2002 Star Wars Attack of the Clones. He played Jenga Fett. Mm -hmm. And um, all the clones. And, <laughs> all of the clones. They, which means, look, if they're, oh, we're opening this up to Boba Fett... If he's going to be behind a mask, let him go and play also maybe Rex. He could. Honestly, I think that would be pretty cool. He's got the shaved head mm -hmm. and they just add a little, oh, I can well, see Well, the it. shaved head and also put that full white beard on God. that he had in Rebels and technically that they retconned in Return of the Jedi. Didn't he play Arthur Curry's dad in Aquaman? Yes, I think he let did. Let me see what he looked like then because I think he has some facial hair. Hold on, sorry, I'm just uh, using the great, reliable Google. <laughs> oh, oh, no, he didn't. Oh, wasn't he? He had the beanie. No, 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 he did play it, but he didn't have the facial hair. Oh, um, okay. He, look, he looks like that in, yep. in the movie. But, yep. man, I can see him as Rex so easily. Yeah. I can 100% see it. So a little bit more about this tidbit. Um, so the sources are saying that he will play Boba Fett, um, which – Please explain the Sarlacc pit if you can. Yeah. Hopefully, I, I hope I they mean, always have an episode of I mean, is it because of all the armor? Probably. I mean, and plus, you know, he's just supposed to be, like, the world's greatest badass. I mean. Kind of a thing. I, so, him and Mando can, like, try to out Mandalorian each other. That would be, I wouldn't mind seeing that fight. Yeah, that like would a, be a like really a fun fight. Dirty bar fight. Mm -hmm. Using like all of their, oh, so cool. And then Mando could be like, this is the way. And then <laughs> Boba Fett could be like, this is not the way. I don't follow the way. So um, Boba Fett is actually just expected to play just a small role in season two of the series. Um, and this, the character was teased in season one, the gunslinger, when a mysterious figure sporting the uh, the bounty hunter's trademark spurs, oh, um, approaching the uh, 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 Mina Wen. Oh yeah, in yeah, that yeah. episode, which I am still so ooh, I can't get into it. I'm I'm gonna talk about it for an hour about her. It's just, I can't. I I was not satisfied. Let's just say that because it's me. You wanted to see her. More. Yeah, duh. So um, yeah, this is this is gonna be really interesting um, to 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 see how they're gonna fold Boba Fett into the story. But if yeah. it's a very small role, maybe it's so much of the cameo. It's it might just be just a cameo. But but then they can always bring him back if he's yeah. in. He's they're establishing that they're in the world. He could make it, you know? Mm -hmm. We have an interesting uh, point from Blade who writes, in the Mandalorian timeline, I would think Rex would be a really old man by that time. Yeah, because it would be after. Oh, yeah, it would be way after be the Wars. So many years. Yeah. It comes in on a cane. Ah. Well, especially for the clone. <laughs> Actually, for both Boba Fett and Rex, because since they're both clones, well, no, Boba Fett did not have the advanced aging done. Because that is something that Jango Fett wanted. He was like, he just wants a kid, no aging done. Or no programming done. But Rex did. So he ages, I think, a little bit faster than most people. So, that, mm, sorry. Sorry. It's not so it makes it even more you know, intent. So it makes, it makes him even older. Yeah. Uh, and then just another comment too, from Jack who writes, I'm looking forward to the live action. So do you think, uh, we will have lightsaber action? I hope so. Better. They introduced the light, the, the dark saber. So, mm -hmm. um, I would love to see Ahsoka with her, with her double lightsabers. And Ahsoka does kind of have a little bit of an attachment to that. 
Dark Saber. Yeah, so uh, we will see. Anything is possible, and uh, I, I look forward to it. I know I'm, I'm just excited. I don't know. Maybe it's the, the nostalgia at work. Yeah. But Boba Fett, even if it's just for one scene in The Mandalorian, I honestly wouldn't mind it um, at all. As long as it fits within the story. I don't want a character to be shoved like shoehorned in there just to just because like oh it's callback to the original yeah like, i don't want true. that like boba fett like serving some sort of service or driving a point home not just like uh hey look there he is it's kind of like well <laughs> i don't need that why do i need that so all right guys we're gonna move on to our final part of the show today and that is <laughs> ask us anything and mad lip so we're gonna have i'm gonna have dustin get ready with the mad lip here yep yep oh, oh, oh that okay? was my shoulder yes mm, poor cookie all right so while Wendy is answering some ask us, ask us, ask me, ask us anything. Yeah. I'm going to start taking down. Would I change it to A U A? Ask us anything. So here is our quick review of what's what. Oh. Okay. Thank Let's you. Let's go back to the comment section and see what you guys are saying about. We're still talking about a little bit. Man, when I read the word Boba Fett, oh, I think it's like Boba Milk Tea. <laughs> and and then much... how much we want to go out and get Boba Milk Tea. <laughs> I miss it so much. Corning sucks. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. So first, we're going to need an adjective. This is a um, Guardians of the Galaxy themed one. Guardians of the Galaxy. Gal an adjective, a noun, and an animal. So an adjective is an adjective describes something or somebody as in lumpy, soft, ugly, messy. You can use lazy. You can use tall. You can use short. You can use uh, ruggedly handsome. Rug, rugged. Uh, you can yeah. You can use unkempt, dirty. Um, there's a lot, there's, there's a lot of words out there. What are your most? So go ahead and start typing your words while I answer this next question. What are your most anticipated anticipated movies of 2020 and 2021. That's a difficult one. Uh, Tenant and Wonder Woman 1984. Tenant, really? Oh man, that trailer looks so good. It's giving me all the Inception <laughs> feels. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Some of the um, adjectives are smelly. Um, this is a noun, cow. Uh, another yeah. adjective is gentle. Another adjective is dangerous. We can start filling in the other adjectives too. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, dangerous. Uh huh. If you need a noun, collar. If you need an adjective, no. stubborn. Stubborn's a good one. Haha. <laughs> Manja, coming in clutch. Pooey. <laughs> For, wait, what? Adjective. An pooey. adjective, pooey? Pooey. You're a pooey person. Remember in the hills when Lauren Conrad got mad at Heidi at, at, about Spencer? And she yelled at Heidi. She was like, he's a sucky person. Sucky person. That's what it was. I was, like, she didn't, I was like, she didn't say pooey. P-O-O. -O. Okay, that too. It's okay. Well, well I'll, I'll know what to read. Okay, um, going back to answering a question. What is the movie you watched as a child that you fell in love with and watched over and over? Princess Bride. As a child, you watched it? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. I saw that movie so many times. Um, I've actually broken a DVD. <laughs> oh, my God. A DVD or VHS? Probably the VHS. VHS, because you were rewound it too much, right? Like, uh, that, it's one of the line. movies that I could put on mute and probably quote every single line from that movie. Yeah. Oh, uh, wow. That's funny. Plural um, noun. I need a plural noun. Plural noun, please. Oh, did, and you, an get, adverb. Oh, did you get collar? Oh, you did. Okay. Um. So we need a, oh, Tonka truck. Tonka truck? Yeah, you know those that's things? a noun, right? That so you can just person, put, person. Put, put an S on it and make it a plural noun if you want to. Oh, um, okay. Let's see. Um, for me, something that I've watched as a child and have continued to watch over and over that will be Disney's The Little Mermaid. I so the I remember walking by it and I never saw it in theaters. So I saw it when it was like coming out on D, on VHS mm -hmm. back then before DVDs existed. Um, I was at the department store with my mom mm -hmm. uh, in Taiwan and I walked by and they were showing the little mermaid and they had like DVD display and stuff like that. Um, and all I saw was the title screen that says the little mermaid, a little fish swims by. And I thought, Oh my God, what is that? And I just watched whatever they were showing for like, I don't know how long I just stood there and I was just enthralled by this movie. I was captivated. And I was like, what is this? The animation is gorgeous. And what kid doesn't like mermaids? So from there on, I became obsessed. 
And I've watched over and over and over and over The Little Mermaid, and it's on Disney Plus now, and I'm really happy because I can watch it whenever, even though I have it on uh, DVD. Um, okay, The Mighty Ducks, Terminator. I remember watching Mighty... Nice. I actually got the soundtrack from Mighty Ducks for my birthday one. With the quack, one quack, yeah. <laughs> quack, 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 quack. Um, another noun is keys, sheep. Um, I need verbs. I need nouns. Here you go. Sheep is a noun. The keys is a noun. So you can put well, key if you want to as a, as a singular. Um, and then we need, what was it? Adverb, noun, verb, and adverb. So an adverb is tells how something is done. So it modifies a verb and usually ends in L-Y. So modestly, stupidly, greedily, carefully, words that end in L-Y would be an adverb. And then um, a verb would be an um, action, like an action, like um, kicking, punching, kick, punch, licking. Kick. Oh, uh, <laughs> throwing, pulling, or pull. Uh, somebody says you finally cut your hair. Yep. Yes. And with, he did it himself with a little bit of help. I just I just took it when. You know what was funny? And we have a vlog coming, and Dustin's gonna edit that together. I'm gonna see if I can get it edited either to. Within the next couple of days, so, I'm not going to see the actual <laughs> not date because yeah, no, I'm terrible. I'm still, I'm still learning how to edit. So um, we have some vlogs and different ki different kinds of content that are coming next week. So a little different from movie reviews. Um, to give you to, to switch up the flavor a little bit. Obviously, movie reviews will always be a thing, but we have some really fun vlog style videos that are coming. So we uh, invite you to watch those. Adverb. I'm working grudgingly. On Gr gr grund grungy, grungy, got it. Grungy. I can't, I can't. All of a sudden, I stopped reading English. <laughs> Strictly. Uh, all right. So, last things I need: adverb and a noun. Didn't you just get an adverb? Did I? I don't know. You scrolled past it. Like, adverb. Greedily, greedily. Oh, okay. She wrote greedily, and then a noun. Uh. Let's see. I don't have a noun yet. If you guys have a noun, go ahead and pop it in. And that is that is the last one. Is Wendy happy or is sad now? I'm happy. I'm having a great Saturday. Why would Wendy be sad? Sometimes I get she sad. She seems so happy. Sometimes I get sad. Uh, oh, no. I had a question. Relate to the party. There are uh, movies that they've watched over and over. The Last Starfighter. Big Trouble in Little China. Oh. And Explorers. Yes. Great choices. Big Trouble in Little China. Oh, sorry. That was from Blade. That was not from Late to the Party. Oh. I stopped. I, I just don't know how to read. I'm it's sorry, okay. Guys. Um, Trust me. You're doing better than I would ever be doing. What made you both as a couple to start uh, YouTube together? So I started YouTube by myself. As a beauty YouTuber, I that was kind of my first introduction into YouTube. And that's like a community that I really found that I was like, oh, wow, I really like this. So I decided that I want to be a beauty blogger. So I would do makeup tutorials, product reviews, which is so much fun. But the thing is that shooting a... Um, what I do? Nothing. I, see, this is why I don't touch Nothing. the technology. Nothing, you're fine. I thought I was only... Um, and now if you're looking for a pen. Okay, sounds good. Um, late to the parties. Uh, sorry, I'm, I'm segueing. Late to the parties. Movies are Titanic or Vanessa. Yes. <laughs> oh, never let go. And Return never of the you're... Jedi. Or you can just hop on the hop on the the piece of wood with me. There was enough room for Rose to move over. That's all I gotta say. They there did was... that in MythBusters. There was... Oh no! They killed Leo for nothing. Yep. And they even oh, had. Um, they even had. Um, uh, see, like I know his name. I've said his name a hundred times. The director, um, um, Gorber, of, no, no of, of Titanic. Um, James Cameron. James, thank you, thank you. See, that is, is why, why I would be do... terrible at a schmodown. That's why there's no. I'd be like, I know the guy's name, we'll but they had the James down, Cameron yeah. on the MythBusters on that episode, and they were even like, you know, you could have fit Leo on there. You could have give the both of them. They yeah. both could have lived. That she, she wouldn't have been like. Yeah. Um, but the YouTube channel, yeah, I started it as a beauty blogger or a beauty YouTuber, but filming a tutorial is so much harder than you guys think. Um, because especially with the beauty thing, like, because you're a beauty YouTuber, if your hair is a little out of place, I feel like sometimes people look at it and be like, mm. and then as a perfectionist, 
you're kind of like, God, I hate it. And you film me and you refilm, you scrapped <laughs> off the video and that sucks. So um, we, we switched gears and then the movie couple, the, our first iteration, and I'm going to get to Hannah's super chat in just a second. So I see Hannah. Thank you so much for sending it in. Um, we decided that we wanted to do a vlog type channel mm -hmm. and loop in movie reviews because we have always loved movies. That was kind of oh, like yeah. our form of entertainment, going to the theaters and seeing movies. So we started to do vlogs with a movie review sometimes in it. Um, but the thing was that nobody really knew who we are. So like, why would they care? In, in, at least in my mind, mm -hmm. like why would they care to watch our vlogs if they don't know who we are? So we, because we were so in inspired by good old days, AMC movie talk, um, because he was a, he's a fan oh, and I watched, watched it, it all, all the time. time. So we kind of decided to flip the gear. Our very first like channel together was called Our Zany Life, which is a play on our last name. S-Z-A-N-Y is the last name. But we dropped the S for the channel. So it was called Our Z-A-N-Y, Our Zany Life, which kind of had like a cool double meaning. Um, and no, it was going not. okay. <laughs> but we're not zany. Um, we're, we're, I feel like we're just regular people and boring. Um, but uh, <coughs> we decided to switch. and. I was playing with the idea and I was like, well, what about the movie couple? Cause we're a couple and we talk about movies together. Let's go for it. Let's go for it. And that brings us to where we are today. And we have so much fun. I, I love doing YouTube with him and because we don't always Ooh. see. Pet, pet, oh yeah. <laughs> we don't always see eye to eye on every movie. I have a very different opinion from him. A lot of times, um, sometimes he'll like something and I won't and vice versa. Like the Lion King, for example, yeah. the, re the live action. I loved it. I absolutely loved it. And he's just like, that's eh, all right. You know? Mm. So, um, that's why I like doing YouTube together with him because it's interesting. We don't always agree. And that's what sparks a conversation. Exactly. Let's get to Hannah's super chat. Thank you so much, Hannah. Hi. I loved the little mermaid when I was little. Are y'all excited about the live action remake? I actually am excited about it. I hope, my only hope is, like, I'm not worried about the cast and the music and the singing ability. I think Lin-Manuel Miranda is attached to it. Oh. I could be wrong. That I did I'm not gonna know. Look, I'm going to look if it up If Lin-Manuel Miranda is attached to it, then I'm a little bit more excited about it. Yeah. Because that sound, I mean, Lin-Manuel Miranda. So, so good. But the thing is, though, the thing that turns me off a little bit yeah. is that there are already so many iterations of it. They had the Broadway show. They have the movie. Yeah. They have the one that to where they just did the musical with the big Broadway star. I mean, not big Broadway stars, but they had oh, like, like, like Little Mermaid Live. Yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Bowl. Yeah, yeah. So I'm afraid that it's kind of like, well, you've already you've kind of already done this. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean. Because the person that I would love to see play Ursula the most kind of has already played Ursula. You know, she, I, I mean, Queen Latifah? Queen Latifah. I mean, when she was on stage, she just rocked it. And you could tell yeah. she was having a blast yes. doing it. So this movie is going to be directed, the live action is going to be directed by Rob Marshall, who I think has a really good grasp on. Um, any sort of properties with music in it. Mm -hmm. uh, Memoirs of a Geisha, he also did. Oh. And he and he, he did a really, really great job with it. I think it, like the cinematography and the color and everything looked beautiful. He also did Mary Poppins Returns, which really like Pirates of the Caribbean on Stranger Tides. I don't really want to talk too much about that because I don't really yeah. like any of the Pirates movies except for the first one. Um, so The Little Mermaid is going to star uh, Haley Bailey. I want to say <sighs> Haley. Halle Bailey, but I want to say Halle Berry. Berry yeah. She's going to be Ariel, and we have Jonah Herking as uh, Prince Eric, Melissa McCarthy as the Sea Witch Ursula, oh. Javier Bodem as King Triton, and Jacob Tremblay as Oh, cute as Flounder! <laughs> Aquafina as Scuttle, and David <laughs> Jake as I two didn't different know that. people playing Scuttle. Why huh? does it say uh, two people? I don't know. I'm reading from the website. It's um, The Dis Insider. So oh, yeah. I, I don't know. The Scuttle's I, down there twice. I do remember hearing about Aquafina as Scuttle. So I'm I'm a little curious why like there's two That's people That's probably a typo. I wouldn't be surprised. Aquafina's gonna play somebody else? Oh no, Aquafina's probably gonna play Scuttle. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't be surprised if the other guy's playing someone else. Maybe David Diggs is going to be Sebastian. Oh uh, oh yeah, maybe, because Sebastian's not in there. Maybe that's who they meant. I'm gonna look it up real quick. And then we're going to get into reading your... Um, yep. See what we put together here for Guardians of the Galaxy. Hold on. He... Well, 
Sebastian. I mean, it doesn't really matter. I mean, it's, it's going to be all. Yeah, he's going to be Sebastian. Okay, so it was. It a was typo. is a typo. Um, so it means it's only going to be his voice, though. I mean, because I'm pretty sure they're not going to put him into a, co a crab costume. No, it's not, <laughs> it's not that kind of movie. Um, Alan Menken uh, recently revealed that he and Lin Manuel Lin Man. Wow. I always mess up his name. Lin too. Manuel Miranda, say that ten times fast. Have finished recording all the music for the film, and it's going to feature Ooh. four brand new songs. So this makes me really happy. New ones are uh, so King Triton gets gets a little bit of singing, and so does oh. Scuttle. Yes, Athena. <laughs> yes. Uh, it's people probably forget gonna that be, she started off as an artist, but she's probably going to be that one song that she tried that Scuttle Bless! tried. Wow. No, new songs. So I think they're going to do way more than that. But that's really exciting. Um, yeah, I'm excited about the remake. I just hope that the swimming and with the tail and stuff, like that's what I worry most about for yeah. that to look unnatural. They're going to have to do it with like green screen for the fins and yeah. then do whatever they did for Aquaman. Because, yeah. you know, all the qualms that I do have about Aquaman, I have to admit that... The way that oh, they Rob moved, Chicago as well. the way that they moved in the water was pretty cool. Yeah. So, fingers crossed. I think the talent wise, like for acting and especially singing, mm -hmm. I think they're covered. I think I'm more worried about in what approach they're going to take the story yeah. and how they're going to film it. If the animation and CGI is going to look okay, um, and with Alan Menken and Lin Manuel Miranda working together, I'm not really worried about the song. I'm actually excited to hear the, the new songs because yeah. like, I love Moana. If you ever listen to the Hamilton soundtrack, it is fantastic. Um, as Dorian Parks would say, it's lit. So <laughs> even though he dropped that because we used to make fun of him for saying that. He like no longer says that anymore. Yeah. So um, yeah, the 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 one thing I kind of don't worry about. Don't don't worry about. Don't feel 100 percent okay with is Melissa McCarthy as Ursula and this is what Vader's um, pet pig said because I like Melissa McCarthy a lot I've liked her since her Gilmore girl days her mm. Asuki is fantastic but I, I I didn't know she sang and after seeing how Quinn Latifah has done in the live action of um, The Little Mermaid on stage which you can also see on Disney Plus mm -hmm. Um, she did a fantastic job, and I just like and you now I can't tell, picture another you person. Could as tell that she was loving every second of those songs, yeah. that she was just strutting her stuff, and mm -hmm. she was like, Yeah, she was feeling it. Yeah, she was feeling it. So, uh, we'll see. We will wait and see. I'm gonna take one more question, and you get ready to, to, to ask uh, to read this thing. Oh, uh, sure. Okay, so uh, Jack Robbins Sorry. asked, What is your favorite? Who is your uh, favorite Disney villain. Can we do top three? Let's do top three. That's tough. Top three in no in, in no order whatsoever. Uh, Shadow Man. I like. I love. Oh, Doctor Fel Felicier. Doctor Felicier from Friends on the Other Side. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and then of course you still have Jafar, and um, I'll say Gaston. Gaston's a good top, a good a good safe pick to go yes. with. Off the top of my head. Thank you. Yeah. Um, thank you for saying that. And thank you for the question, Jack. And thank you, David, for saying, don't forget to like the stream. Thank you so much. Please like the stream. We're almost at 30,000 subscribers. Almost there. Um, my favorite villains, Gaston is one. Mm -hmm. Hades. Oh, Hercules that's a good one, too. He really uh, made that. He really did make that his own. James Wood, baby. James Wood. Go for it, man. Yeah. Um, I have two more because I can't pick and they're kind of different from each other. <laughs> um, I would say Scar is a fantastic Scar. villain. I mean, murdering his own brother and pinning it on the kid. Wow. And I know it's like a Hamlet storyline. Yeah. But it's still like really evil. And then the plotting against the hyenas and all of this stuff and the voice, Jeremy Irons voice. Yeah. Amazing. Um, Uncle Scar, you're so weird. You have no idea. You have no idea. So your father saved you the whole kingdom. Hmm. <laughs> He's so jealous. Imagine being that jealous of a cub. I know. He was just born into it, but yeah. Um, and then, so um, Gaston, Jafar, Hades, and then I would put one more in there, and that's very different. I would say Yzma. Yzma! Oh, the lever, Kronk! Wrong lever! What do we even have, that lever? That is a good one. 
That is, oh, now I wish I would have thought of He's that. He's not. Hit him in the head. <laughs> uh, let's see if what some of you guys are saying. Cinderella's stepmother. Oh. And a very realistic villain, too. Yeah. Just someone who you can be like, I know someone like that. Mm -hmm. Um, thank you, Super Chat from Weston. Thank you so much. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to uh, any of our mothers out moms. there. Um, dogs are better than people. Yes. Yes. We and actually Navi have Delphi at the is better than humans. Come on, Navi. Come here, Navi. Oh. Say hi to Weston. Hi, Weston. Hi. How are you doing? Hello. It is a, is it, it's, a good, it's a pleasure to, no, you can't do that. <laughs> you know what? You can kind of like, it's a pleasure to meet you. I'm sorry. Thank you, Weston, so much for your super chat. Thank you, all of you guys, for supporting us. Uh, mm. Let's see. Other villains. Evil Queen from Snow White. Going classic. Mm -hmm. uh, Maleficent Jolie. Uh, Frollo from Hunchback. Oh. That is an evil. He is. Very real. realistic. Yeah. Villain. Very realistic evil, too. Mm -hmm. Just like the stepmother. To yeah. where you can connect it to someone or some like something. You can think of that person in real life. Absolutely. Cruella de Vil. And Crunk was the best henchman. Crunk! Yeah, why don't you keep Nobby and I will read the thing. Oh, okay, come here. Thank you, Weston, for sending yeah. it in. Okay, let's go ahead and wrap up our show with, I, I don't know why I do this and they can't see. <laughs> with Madeline. White balance. And this is, of course, you guys filling in all the blanks for us with your verbs, adverbs, adjectives, nouns. Um, and this is Guardians of the Galaxy themed. So the title for this one is the lure Maybe of the orb. Are you okay? You Navi's, ready? Navi's scrum Are you ready? Are you ready? Here, I'll, get, I'll put her in a more time. There we go. There we go. Okay. There we go. Here we go. You ready? Yes. The stolen orb is a very smelly artifact. It has a color, a covenant, or a Maltese cow of kind of vibe. A M Maltese cow <laughs> <laughs> of a vibe. Um, and although it seems dangerous... The orb actually contains stubborn. Oh, no, stubborn. Oh, stubborn. I misspelled. Sorry. Okay. The orb actually contains stubborn ingots, infinity tonka trucks. These stones are greedingly, greedingly powerful. They can only be handled by sheep of very pooey and extraordinary power. After Peter <laughs> Poe tricks Yondu with a tall fake orb. The guardians eating the real orb to the guardians eating the real orb to the Nova Corps. What <laughs> happened there? What did they poop it out? Here's your orb. Well, it is a very pooey artifact. I guess so. Um, the orb represents keys, as the Taiwan collector says. It is such a greeting, a greedily potent pen. Sometimes this one literally makes zero sense today, but that was so funny. We loved it. Oh my gosh, Navi, did you like it? Yes, mommy. I love you. I, I love, love you, puppy. Her hair has gotten, her ears have gotten so long. And later we're gonna have um Falcor isn't here right now because he's at the groomer, but. My God, he needed it. Oh we, my gosh, we tried so many times. Things constantly came up to where we had to take him to the vet and we don't want to take him to the vet on the same day that he's going to have grooming because he's going to freak out and have a really bad, what do you like? Oh, I just went to the comments and my GTR says, now we know why it's smelling. Because in order to transport it, you have to eat it and then poop, poop it, it out. out. That's why they don't put that in the movie. <laughs> Maybe James Gunn can work into it uh, in Guardians of the Galaxy 3. You're going to have that in the Guardians of the Galaxy 3, Miss Nervy Face. Oh my god, that's so cute. Mm. Uh, Falcor has gotten quite fluffy. We've tried Too to give him fluffy. a little bit of trimming here and there. And so he looks a little splotchy, like one side is shorter one area is shorter than the rest so his fur kind of goes like kind of bumpy uh so we finally have his appointment today we he's at he's at the groomers um he's gonna get a nail trim he's gonna get teeth brushing um so yeah we we are excited to see what Falcor looks like when he comes back very skinny usually usually he looks kind of plumpy with all the fur uh and then afterwards he he's a less plumpy <laughs> uh let's see uh, Wendy, where are you from? I am raised, born and raised in Taiwan, and then I moved to Florida, and then I moved to LA. 
where she met me. Where she met Dusty. I'm a California native. I yeah, have been born and raised here, and I've always lived prob in and around L.A. County. Believe it or not, kind of rare. Yeah. Here in LA, surprisingly, because most people are transplants from elsewhere. Mm -hmm. Well, you guys, uh, we had to get ready to go pick up Falcor. So thank you all so much for joining our stream today. Thank you for playing um, with a little bit of AMA. Thank you for playing Mad Libs with us. Mm -hmm. You guys, we can always count on you guys to give us the best of the verbs and the and the, the adjectives verbs and the plural nouns. And the plural nouns. So thank you so much. How come the groomer is open? So they're doing um, a very limited grooming session so you have to schedule it with them and you can't go into the store so they come out to your car mm -hmm. and they put a little slip collar around your dog and then they bring them in we can't physically be in the store and usually it's multiple dogs at once now they're only doing one dog at a time which is why falcor was not able to get an appointment until now it, we yeah. literally had to wait two weeks to get uh grooming done for falcor because the groomers are slammed and um what they do at the groomers is um, they don't force the dog through the process. Um, it's they call it gentle, uh, gentle grooming. Um, so if the dog starts to get stressed out, especially when we have scissors and clippers and stuff in their and face, boom. and the loud sound, they that will actually sense. stop and they will uh, move the dog to the side and let the dog calm down a little bit before continuing. So that's why it takes like two to three hours per dog, and that's why all their film appointments have been. Um, Filled. So they've, they've just recently, they've actually had very limited hours. Like they were only open from, I think, 10 to 4. They've actually just um, reopened from, I think, 9 to, to 6 again. And that would just happen, I think, very recently. So it's still very safe. Debbie, I will check our DM. And um, late to the party, yes, absolutely. Let's go ahead and cross over. I'm going to yeah. figure it out because I think I have to pay for a thing in StreamYard. I just got to make sure I have the finances to do so. Um, but once we have that figured out, yes, let's do a crossover. Uh, we have to figure out what time is best uh, for you guys. You guys more so than us because I think you guys are still um, essentially you're working. So let's uh, figure that out. And you guys... We will see you in the next one. Thank you, Banja. Oh, okay, I'll get to your question. Oh. Um, how tall are you guys? I'm six even, maybe like six and a quarter of an inch. I say he's six one. I'm five one, so we're a whole foot foot apart. <laughs> so we look like this when we're walking around. And I don't know how tall Navi is. But Navi mm -hmm. is cute. Navi is size cute. Size cuteness. Size cute. Fun size. Well, you guys, thank you so much for watching. We will see you on Wednesday for another live stream. Thank you for all the super chats, for your support. Make sure you like, subscribe, hit that thumbs up button, and we will see you in the next one. Bye. bye. See you later. Say bye now.